guys. Um, fucking hell review. Okay, I'm going to be reviewing a beer which was kindly sent to me by Rob from hopzine.com. Uh, he's also got a YouTube channel on here. www.youtube.com forward slash hopzine. Not hopzine, hopzine. Um, <laughs> I'll stick a link in the descriptions. Uh, what happened was, um, as I mentioned in my Leguanitas review, uh, Kevin from Clements Homebrew sent some beers down for, for some of the guys in the UK. Uh, Rob was really kind enough to chuck in two bottles for me. Um, one of them is a, a Buxton brew, which is a, a limited edition, which I'm so looking forward to trying. But this one, even more so, because it's from my favourite brewery in the UK. Um, they just constantly, constantly produce good beers. I don't think, I don't think it's possible for them to produce a bad beer. <laughs> it really, I'm not, and I'm not making it up. They really are that good. And the fact is, they're a tiny little brewery underneath a railway arch as well. So it's just amazing. So Rob, thank you so much. I know this is going to be a good one because it's from the Colonel and it's also in collaboration with Brodie's which is a brewery that um, I've heard so much about from Stuart Pickard of Ginger's Royal Trail and also other people they just said they're a stunning brewery so so for the two of them to get together you know it's going to be something good um, this is a black IPA and it's called Scanner Darkly it comes in at 6.9% as you can see it's got the old Colonel label which is really basic but really pretty looking I think and very recognisable so I was just having a look at the bottle there's some you can see there's some old sediment in there I think it's I don't know if you can see that with that light but it's sort of like clogged up at the bottom so hopefully it won't be too loose but I'm going to be drinking this as fresh as possible because when it comes to IPAs you know that's the best thing to do okay so Leave that about there. As you can see, it's not as pitch black as I thought it was going to be. It's almost like a, a dark sort of chocolate brown. You can sort of just see a little bit of light coming through the bottom. Not too much. But yeah, there's a slightly off-white head. Uh, slightly sort of creamy, tan looking head. Um, just looking gorgeous as always. This is my favourite bit. Let's give it a nose. Ah. Oh. Beautiful, really, really nice, sort of pleasant, sweet fruits. You're getting a bit of, you're getting oranges, lemons, grapefruits, passion fruit, mango. Even a bit of like pomegranate. Um, what's that? Oh, what's that fruit? It's almost like a plum, like a really sort of ripe plum uh, smell, but. Big, juicy, bountiful fruits. I'm not getting too much roasting on the nose, which you usually tend to get with the black IPAs, but sometimes those hops can sort of overpower the old black malt, so. But, oh, it smells so juicy and beautiful, so <laughs> I'm so excited to try this. Rob, thank you very much, mate. Whoops. It's not a fate spear, is it? <laughs> Cheers. That is really, really good. In a way, it reminds me a lot of the um, Black Rocks from Buxton. Not too much roasting as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it'd be a little bit of roasting, but there's hardly any. What you're really getting is um, those fruits almost instantly hitting your tongue. Nice medium sort of carbonation. Um, then you get this bitterness, but it's not a huge bitterness as I thought it was gonna be. Um, maybe sort of mid-level um, which comes in it's a nice sort of dry in bitterness as well it's not too sort of um, acidic or juicy it's nice and clean um, but then again now that it's been sitting in your mouth for a while and I'm starting to get the aftertaste now I'm starting to get a bit of the roasting coming through it's a slightly sort of burnt roastiness um, really really sort of faint smokiness on the tongue really really faint but I've got to go in again because it's lovely. Hmm. In, 
regards to like hot fl oh sorry oh I've got a bit of chocolate then <laughs> this is a strange one um I was just saying then when I tried it then um, I got more of a passion fruit and then all of a sudden this chocolate just popped up out of nowhere that is really really nice what I was going to say was the, the flavors aren't sort of booming you know American big boy um, flavors but they're big enough um, they're, more, they're almost like a, um, a classier sort of um, extreme if that makes any sense it's like a classier extreme as opposed to a you know what I mean you know you're really, you are still getting those flavors but they're, they're nice and lovely and smooth as well as being robust um, this is really really good I'll tell you what it reminds me of as well is the um, pardon me the Colonel Powell which is really really chuggable and sessionable and tasty this I could easily knock back because it really has got that sort of law to it when you're drinking it you know it sort of wants to pull you in and keep you drinking but but it's good it's really really good it seems to have a different flavor with each taste let's give it one more go mmm and now mm. now I'm starting to get a bit more lemon and a bit more lime coming through and also a bit of coffee I think it might be because the air is getting to the beer, sort of making it change slightly, but that is a beauty. Really, really nice black IPA. Um, I can see why Rob likes it so much. I've still got a bit left in the bottle, but I've got to be careful because it's got the old sediment in, but it's a, it's so nice and it's so, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this one again. I think it might be a special edition, so I'm going to pour the rest in and uh, cope with the effects of sediment tomorrow. Rob, thank you very, very much. Rating wise, nine and a half out of 10. Beautiful beer. I would have given it a 10 if it was easier for me to get, um, but as it is, that's a blinding score. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for an Open Viking Hour review. Cheers!